Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 11. Now, this particular story here is one that perhaps you're familiar with because uh, it is a very famous story. It's the story where David sins with Bathsheba. In one sense, it's a very sad tale. It's, uh, it's, it brings great grief to the heart of God. But on the other hand, it's also an encouraging tale. And it leads to some very, very significant portions of Scripture that many of us have found great comfort in and we all should find great comfort in as we walk with him. This story starts off where David is supposed to go out to war, but he doesn't. And he stays back. He gets lazy in his later years. And uh, that's when the temptation happens. And the truth is that, and many preachers have said this, that very often temptation ha uh, happens when we are not doing what we should be doing. Idle hands are the devil's play playground, we sometimes say. And it's very true, and that's the case with David. But one of the things to note here is that David tries to cover up his sin. And when he does that, there are still people who know what it's all about, what's going on. In the passage before us, Joab, the commander of his army, he's got a fairly discerning spirit. Now, Joab's not always the most stellar character in Scripture, but in this particular case, he's He's discerning properly. He understands that, that something's amiss with David and Uriah, that there is something significant going on right here. And so Joab is one who, uh, who, who does know that something's up, something's amiss. Later on in the next chapter, we're going to find that that David is confronted with his sin by Nathan the prophet. And, and so from that confession that David brings, we're going to find some great texts of Scripture. Now, I don't want to dwell right now upon uh, as much upon David's sin, except to say that it is a function of our sin nature. None of us is perfect. David's name as king of Israel is one of the most famous in all of history, and it will continue to be until the Lord comes. But the reality is that he was one who confessed his sin. Now, if he had tried to cover up his sin, then we probably wouldn't know nearly as much about David as what we do today. But instead, he is one who confessed his sin before the Lord and found restoration and healing. And the places in the scripture that uh, we can find great comfort in have to do with the Psalms. Psalm 51 and Psalm 32 are Psalms that are, uh, are written in light of and in the aftermath of David's sin with Bathsheba and the confrontation that he has with, with Nathan the prophet. Psalm 51 is David's prayer of confession, and it is worth our while to go through that, uh, that prayer of David with a fine-tooth comb, going through it, looking carefully at what he says there, because the reality is that you and I also have sinned. Maybe not in the same way that David has, but we have also sinned. And we need to look at that particular psalm in order to understand what true confession is really all about. But then Psalm 32 is there to, uh, to talk about the joy of forgiveness. And that's what David experienced, that he could have that, uh, that forgiveness before the throne of God. It wasn't that he was no longer guilty, but rather that the Lord was no longer holding that against him. And there's a difference. David was always guilty of his sin with Bathsheba. But the good news is that David looked ahead to the atonement of Christ and he saw in that atonement his own opportunity for forgiveness. 
And when that forgiveness came, the rejoice, the rejoicing that flooded his soul was a very significant thing. Just as it is with you and me, when we confess our sins and finally release that burden to him and know the, the, the freedom and the, uh, uh, the, the joy of forgiveness. And that's what Psalm 32 is all about. So I said, it's a sad tale. It is because there was great uh, discouragement that came upon the people. There was great uh, anxiety upon the nation. There was a rebellion that happened because of it. But there's also great hope because we can find forgiveness just as David did. I hope you found that forgiveness. Father, I ask you this, this day to strengthen us, to provide for us, to help us to keep short accounts with you. David's sin was something that he bore for, uh, for a good long time. But Father, we thank you that when he, when he confessed, and when he unburdened his heart and his life, you brought joy to his life, just as you have done for many, many others. Thank you that you've done it for me. Perhaps you've done it for each one who's hearing my voice now. But Father, we just simply ask that you would help us to find um, uh, forgiveness and wholeness in our relationship with you. Meet us now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day.